chapter 25, and just like that, our bus was back to being full. For the first time ever, Rodeo skipped the three questions for our new writer. I'm guessing because she was really just joining folks who were already on, and so that was like a loophole or something. Salvador and Miss Vega and Miss Vega's sister, sister Concepcion all piled up onto Jaeger with their suitcases and duffels and hubcap. While Miss Vega explained what was going on to Rodeo and Lester, I dragged Salvador back to my room so he could give me his version. We sat down at the edge of my mattress and he laid it all out for me. Okay, so this is like a total train wreck, he said. What happened to the job for your mom? There never was a job, Salvador spit, his face tight with anger. Chris told my tia there was a job, but turns out Chris was full of crap, which is no surprise to anyone except my tia, because Chris has always been full of crap. So they get up here, and my tia keeps asking about where the job is, and Chris keeps lying and stalling, and then she wakes up this morning, and there's some dumb note from him saying he's sorry, but he's just like not ready for all the responsibility of a relationship or whatever. And he's gone, like totally gone with his car and his stuff and most of their money. You serious? His eyes flashed at me. Does it sound like I'm joking? He snapped and I pulled my head back, but he clicked his tongue and turned his eyes down a little and said right away, I'm sorry, I'm just like super pissed. No, no, I get it. That's crappy. I reached back and scooped up Ivan from where he was curled up at the end of the bed and handed him to Salvador. Ivan shot me an ears back look, but he's chill, so he went with it. Salvador sat with Ivan in his lap and scratched his head, and Ivan leaned into it and started purring, and I saw Salvador's shoulders relax just a tad. Cat therapy works. I sat for a minute, letting Ivan work his magic. Then I pushed on. So, um, Yakima? Oh, well, that's an actual job, not through Chris, either. My tia used to work with a lady, and they were tight. And when all this started to go down, my tia called her. She's working at a hotel in Yakima. Actually, her and her husband, like, own it. Anyway, she says she's got jobs for my mom and my tia, 100% for sure. We just got to get there. I'm sorry, we keep messing up your plans. I spread my hands and grinned. Are you kidding? This is perfect. Now we have an excuse to go all the way to Washington. I kind of expected Salvador to smile back and maybe give me a high five or something. But he just nodded and looked down at his hands. And I remembered the secrets he'd shouted and realized that this whole thing probably wasn't as much fun for him as it was for me. I took my smile down a notch and said, Salvador, I'm really sorry all this is happening to you and your mom. And he shot me a suspicious look and said, sorry? You're not breaking our promise, are you? And I said, of course not. And he nodded and said, good. And then we both agreed it was probably time for a game of Uno. Rodeo is always saying how the universe seeks balance, just like with a lot of things Rodeo says. I'm not entirely sure what he means, but I do know that only a few hours after the bad news about Chris and the jobs and everything, the universe gave us another passenger, and she was most definitely on the positive side of the scale. Her name was Val, and this is how she ended up with us. We'd driven all the long day through the upper peninsula of Michigan. Salvador's aunt volunteered for a three-hour driving shift, which I thought was awful nice. I spent most of it sitting up behind her with Miss Vega chatting and laughing. They were close, those two. They told me all sorts of funny stories about when they were growing up. There was quite an incident involving ketchup squirted on a white quinceanera dress, and something about their mom walking in on Salvador's mom with a boy. They wouldn't give me all the details on that one. But the embarrassed blood running to Esperanza's face pretty much told me what I needed to know. It was nice spending time with the sisters who knew each other and loved each other. Plus, Concepcion had a laugh like I'd never heard. Loud and sudden and rowdy. I couldn't help but laugh along when she did, even if I didn't get the joke. Anyway... Sometime late that evening, when we were out of Michigan, through Wisconsin, and into Minnesota, and it was already starting to get dark and some folks were settling into sleeping positions, we stopped at a gas station to give Jaeger a fresh tank. I was a desperate kind of starving and headed into the little store and got me one of those spicy hot dogs they always have spitting on those rolling stove things. I love them. Give me one of those and a cold bottle of squirt, which I also bought, of course. 
and I'm in heaven. I honestly ain't sure exactly what squirt is supposed to taste like, but I do know that what it does taste like is absolute refreshing perfection. I was already one bite into the dog and heading back out to Jaeger when I saw her. Well, really, I heard her. She was sitting on the pavement up against the store, and she sniffled. Just a little sniffle, but it caught my ear, and I stopped in my tracks and then backed up a step to stand in front of her. She was wearing ripped-up jeans and a black hoodie, and she had a nose ring, which I'd always thought were kind of awesome. When I stopped, she looked up at me, and I saw her eyes were all red-rimmed. You all right? I asked. Her eyebrows dropped and her eyes narrowed like she was getting ready to answer all tough. But then the toughness in her eyes gave way to wetness. She rolled her eyes and I saw them fill up before she looked away from me. No, she answered. Her voice broke when she said it. What's the matter, you thumbing? She blinked at me. What's that mean? Her voice was hoarse. You know, hitchhiking, looking for a ride somewhere. Her eyes filled up again. Yeah, I guess. Well, where are you headed? She shrugged again, then coughed out a dry laugh with no funny in it whatsoever. Away. You running away? She snorted. Not exactly, more like kicked out. Kicked out of your home? How come? She looked at me a second, sizing me up, then shook her head. You wouldn't understand. I took a swig of my squirt. Try me. She sniffed, scratched at her neck, and then said, My parents just found something out and they don't approve of who I am, of what I am, I guess. Well, what are you? The girl swallowed a couple times and said in a broken voice, I'm gay. I didn't say anything. That didn't seem like any kind of reason at all to kick a perfectly nice person out of her house. But when someone's hurting, you got to do something. Always kindness, like Rodeo says. So I set my bottle of squirt down on the curb and took my spicy hot dog in both hands and carefully ripped it into two pieces right in the middle. I held half of it out to her. Want to share? I asked. She shot a curious look at the half hot dog between us, then took it. Careful, I warned her as I sat down beside her. It's spicy. There's jalapenos cooked right into it. She took a bite and I asked, what's your name? She answered around her mouth full of hot dog. Valerie. Then she swallowed and added, Val. My name's Coyote. Nice to meet you. I held out a hand and she shook it. The girl sniffled and then took another bite, and while she got to chewing, I got to thinking. Now, obviously, I was thinking of giving this girl a ride. I don't care who you are. If you see some girl crying at a gas station at night, you can't help but feel like you ought to help them if you can. Just look at that nosy lady who called the cops on me when Rodeo just left me behind the night I met Salvador. There is such things as good help and bad help, though, and I was more interested in seeing if I could give Val the good kind. Plus... That bit about Val's parents really got my fur up like Ivan's when he sees a dog. My very favorite aunt, my mom's sister, Jen, is gay. And her wife, Sophia, is my very favorite aunt-in-law. And the thought of someone hating on them just because of who they love made me want to put on boxing gloves. Also, obviously, though, I couldn't do anything more to mess with my timeline. But if this Val girl didn't care where she was going, it wouldn't slow us down one bit to help her out and let her on board. Heck. If she had her license, she could even help drive and get us there sooner, maybe. But thirdly, obviously, rodeo has rules about taking in runaways. Anyone who's under 18 is a no-go, for lots of good reasons having to do with the law and whatnot. There were a lot of obviouslys bouncing around in my head during that first conversation with Val. How old are you? I asked. She looked me up and down. 19, she said. 19? Huh. You look young, still living with your parents? I'm going to school, or I was anyway, community college. I looked around the parking lot. It was a busy interstate truck stop with plenty of folks coming and going. Not all of them were the kind of folks you'd want to leave someone crying with, if you know what I mean. I looked at Val, sitting there on the cement with tear-puffed eyes and no home to go to. There's so much sadness in the world. I took a second and rinsed the spicy out of my mouth with squirt. Well, you want to come with us? Val narrowed her eyes. Who? Me and Rodeo. We're in that bus over there. We got a few other passengers, too. We're heading west toward Washington State by way of Boise, Idaho. We could drop you off anywhere you want to go. Val eyed the bus. You're not, like, 
weirdos or something, are you? You're not dangerous? Oh, we're definitely weirdos, but we ain't the dangerous kind. She snorted. Then she tilted her head. I actually was kind of thinking of heading to Seattle. I got a cousin there who's pretty cool. Well, that's perfect. Meant to be. Val chewed her lip for a second. Then she closed her eyes, opened them, and stood up. Okay, I guess. Great. First, I got to ask you some questions, though. One minute and three questions later, Val was following me up Jaeger's dirty steps. Rodeo had taken over the wheel, and he pursed his lips at Val. Who's this? A new fellow passenger, Rodeo. I did my best to sound confident and enthusiastic. Rodeo blew a long breath out his nose. This bus, he said, keeping his voice low so Val couldn't hear, is a home for two people. He held up two fingers to make his point. You and me. And now we have, he looked around the bus, his lips moving as he counted. Seven people on board. Seven, honey bear, and a cat. Yeah, I said, holding up my hands. But it's built to carry 56, right? Which I could tell from the look on Rodeo's face the moment I said it was actually not a good angle for me to take. I already asked her the three questions. I said, really? Yes, sir. What's your favorite place, he asked, and I could tell he was testing me, and I resented that for sure. Her grandma's kitchen, I said with some brass in my voice to let him know I didn't appreciate him thinking I was lying about asking her on a Sunday morning. Rodeo pursed his lips. It's a good answer, I said. Rodeo stood a moment longer, then nodded. Yeah, he said, it is. But then he shook his head and looked out at the nighttime parking lot of fluorescent lights and gas station litter. I didn't say anything. I knew we was teetering right on the edge of his kindness, and I didn't want to push him out of it. Plus, I knew him. I knew my dad. You give him the chance, his kindness wins every time. And sure enough, Rodeo turned in his seat. He turned and looked into Val's eyes. He looked into them slow and quiet and gentle, and he smiled a smile that was small, but still showed the white of his teeth. And he said right into Val's eyes, Howdy, what's your name? She cleared her throat. Val, sir. How old are you, Val? 19, 20 in May. Rodeo nodded. All right, you can call me Rodeo. There's food in the cupboard there if you're hungry. And Rodeo turned back to the windshield and turned the key and good old Jaeger rumbled to life. I pulled Val up behind me and she gave me a look, eyebrows all crinkled up. What the heck was that? She whispered. I put a hand on her shoulder. That was you getting a ride. Pick out a seat, Val. Make yourself at home.